Now I'm going to explain how retinal ganglion cells generate on or off responses when spots of light are shown in the centers of their receptive fields. This is to remind you there are two types of retinal ganglion cells, those with on centers and off surrounds, and those with off centers and on surrounds. And the question we ask now is, how does the retinal circuitry generate an on center in some ganglion cells and an off center in other ganglion cells? The key feature here is the sign of the synapse that the photoreceptor makes with the bipolar cell, that synapse. There are two rules to remember that make it much easier to understand how an on-center or an off-center is generated. The first rule is the synapse made by the bipolar and the ganglion cell is always excitatory. Always. You don't have to worry about that one. You don't have to think about it. It's always going to be excitatory. The synapse, however, between the photoreceptor and the bipolar can either be excitatory or it can be inhibitory. That leads to the second rule. The synapse is always inhibitory for on-center cells and excitatory for off-center cells. And that's what's going to make everything so difficult because the sign of the synapse is inverted. That is, if it's a positive synapse, an excitatory synapse, you generate an off-center. And if it's an inhibitory synapse, you will generate an on-center. Let's see how this works. All right. And we're going to have three cells here, the photoreceptor, the bipolar, connected to the ganglion cell. And in this case, all of the synapses are excitatory. That is, the synapse between the photoreceptor and the bipolar is excitatory. And of course, the synapse between the bipolar and the ganglion cell is always excitatory. So let's exp record the membrane potentials of each of these cells in the dark. So we stick microelectrodes into them, and then we connect them to some kind of recording device, like an oscilloscope. And let's see what the membrane potentials are like in the dark. And, of course, the membrane potential of the photoreceptor is depolarized. And just to refresh your memory, the reason it's depolarized is because there are sodium channels in the segment or the membrane of the rod, rod outer segment. In fact, of the cone outer segments, two of all the photoreceptors. And those open sodium channels allow for the influx of positive charges, which accounts for the depolarization of the photoreceptor in the dark. Okay. So we have that squared away. Now, since the photoreceptor is making an excitatory synapse with the bipolar cell, it gets the bipolar cell depolarized. So both the photoreceptor and the bipolar cell are depolarized in the dark. And since the synapse between the bipolar and the ganglion cell is excitatory and the bipolar cell is depolarized, it is releasing transmitter onto the ganglion cell, causing it to depolarize, and the ganglion cell is firing randomly, that is spontaneously, in the dark. Right. Now, just to refresh your memory, all the excitatory synapses between the photoreceptor and the bipolar utilize ampotype of glutamate receptors. So glutamate is released, and what happens, it binds onto the channel, it opens the channel, and you get an influx of sodium, thereby depolarizing the bipolar cell. Okay. So now what's going to happen when we flash on some light? So the cell is initially depolarized in the dark, and we flash on some light. And the first thing the light does is it causes the photoreceptor to hyperpolarize. And because it is hyperpolarized, the photoreceptor stops releasing excitatory transmitter onto the bipolar cell. There it goes. And whereas the bipolar was previously depolarized because it's not depolarized anymore by excitation, it too will hyperpolarize. And because it hyperpolarizes, it in turn will stop releasing excitatory transmitter into the ganglion cell, and the ganglion cell will hyperpolarize. So all three of them were hyperpolarized in the dark. They follow each other.
I want to pause for a moment to make a point about the effects of hyperpolarization on ganglion cells. I want to take you way back in time to the chapters on sodium channels and anodal brake excitation. Remember that the gates of sodium channels are set by membrane potential, where the probability of the activation gates being open and the inactivation gates being closed, that is when the channels are unavailable, is much higher when the membrane potential is depolarized and much lower when the membrane potential is hyperpolarized. Now consider the ganglion cell in the dark. Here the membrane potential is depolarized and thus some, although not all, of the sodium channels are in an unavailable state. That is, their activation gates are open and their inactivation gates are closed. Light causes the ganglion cells to hyperpolarize, and as a result, many more sodium channels are available to fire an action potential because the hyperpolarization closes their activation gates and opens their inactivation gates and thus makes them available. In other words, most sodium channels are reset and a large number are sitting in the membrane just ready to open in response to a depolarization. The depolarization comes when the light goes off, thereby causing the bipolar to release excitatory transmitter onto the ganglion cell. H here it is, watch. The light turned off, the photoreceptor depolarizes, the depolarization of the photoreceptor causes it to release excitatory transmitter onto the bipolar, the bipolar depolarizes, which causes it to release excitatory transmitter onto the ganglion cell, and the ganglion cell therefore depolarizes. The depolarization to the light offset then evokes a strong discharge in the ganglion cell due to both the enhanced number of available sodium channels which were made available by the prior hyperpolarization together with the depolarization evoked by the resumption of the release of excitatory transmitter by the bipolar onto the ganglion cell. Okay, next we turn to the ganglion cells with an on-center receptive field which fire to the onset of light. And remember, these photoreceptors make an inhibitory synapse with the bipolar cell rather than an excitatory synapse. The synapse is inhibitory because the receptors on these bipolar cells are metabotropic glutamate receptors, whereas the receptors on the off-center bipolars are ampotype glutamate receptors. The metabotropic receptors on some of the bipolar cells operate in a way very similar to the way that photoreceptors work. This is illustrated in this slide. These bipolars have open sodium channels that normally depolarize the cell, just like the photoreceptors do. When glutamate binds to the metabotropic glutamate receptors, it triggers a series of events that hydrolyzes the cyclic GMP and acts to close the sodium channels, thereby preventing the influx of positively charged sodium ions and causing the bipolar cell to hyperpolarize. The important point here is that when glutamate is not being released, the bipolars are not in the normal resting potential of about minus 70 millivolts, but rather the bipolars are depolarized. I will point out to you why this is important in just a few moments. Okay, here we have an on-center receptive field in the dark. And of course, in the dark, the photoreceptors are depolarized. They're always depolarized in the dark. And because the photoreceptor is depolarized, it's releasing inhibitory transmitter onto the bipolar cell and thus hyperpolarizing the bipolar cell. Because the bipolar cell is hyperpolarized, it does not release excitatory transmitter onto the ganglion cell. The ganglion cell is not excited, and thus it's at its resting potential around the potassium equilibrium potential. Okay, we're in the dark, and the photoreceptors are depolarized, the bipolars are hyperpolarized, 
and the ganglion cell is at rest. Now we flash on some light. And what happens is that the photoreceptor is hyperpolarized by light, and it stops releasing inhibitory transmitter onto the bipolar cell. As a consequence, the bipolar cell depolarizes. Now, why does it depolarize? Remember, it has metabotropic glutamate receptors. And when they're not being inhibited, the metabotropic glutamate receptors have open sodium channels. At, at, consequently, the bipolar cell is depolarized when it's not being inhibited. Okay. Now, because the bipolar is no longer being inhibited, it depolarizes. The depolarization then uh, causes the bipolar to release excitatory transmitter onto the ganglion cell. And as a consequence of that, the ganglion cell is excited and fires action potentials, hence the onset response. Now we're going to turn the light off. The light goes off. And when the light goes off, the photoreceptors depolarize again, and they release inhibitory transmitter onto the bipolar. Now the bipolar is hyperpolarized. The hyperpolarization causes the bipolar to stop releasing excitatory transmitter onto the ganglion cell. And as a consequence, the ganglion cell is not excited and thus reverts to its resting potential around the potassium equilibrium potential in the dark. And that's how the onset response is generated in an on-center receptive field ganglion cell.